Yo, what's up guys? All right, this is a remake on my how to increase your vertical video. I'm just gonna be going a little bit further into detail with how to increase your vertical. Okay, so the way I rank these tips has zero relevance with their ranking. Like, I'm gonna, no specific order, no great, greatest, least or greatest or anything like that. Okay, so first, you're not training to build to get big, bigger legs. I mean, if you're skinny, it's just, it's just gonna be a part of the result, but that's not your main priority if you're trying to increase your vertical. Now, you can really follow most programs where you just progressively overload with, be it through any exercise and you're gonna increase your vertical by, if you're, if you're untrained by a lot, honestly. Um, like you can follow your typical bodybuilder routine, just basically just heavy squats, uh, not even as to grass squats, how they call it, just parallel squats. You know, your leg presses, that kind of stuff, uh, leg races. All that kind of stuff. And yeah, you're still gonna get get a massive increase to your vertical if you've never trained before. But once you're already trained enough, and if you've been training for at least six to 12 months, so about a year, you should be changing your routine. And I mentioned this with me, because I always wanted to dunk. Um, I'm 18 now, and I started trying to weight lift, and I was asking my coaches at my, gym, at my school what the best way to, for me to jump higher was, and they had me on your typical bodybuilder routine. Not bodybuilder, just heavy squats, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it did help. I, my, my, I measured my vertical back then, it was about 25 inches. Uh, probably increased it by 20 to 28, per se. Um, and I was plateaued there for the longest time. And it stayed like that up until last year where I decided to start taking things differently. I joined all the programs. So I tried, I must have tried, what did I try? ATG, so Athletic Truth Group with Ben Ovals, or Knees Over Toes Guy on Instagram. Well, uh, Isaiah Rivera's THP Strength with whatever his other name, the mastermind behind it is. And most recently, uh, PJF Performance. There's, it's a super big difference, the way to train for just to get bigger legs, just for aesthetic reasons as to training just increase your uh, vertical leap. So when you're trying to increase your vertical leap, you're basically trying to increase your fast twitch muscle fibers and increase your uh, power output ratio. So just basically, the, the key to jumping higher is how much uh, force can you put into the ground and how much how quickly can you take that force up into the air, basically. That's the simplest way of tell, uh, explaining this. Okay, so the actual training methods, here's where it's different. Where you're When you're just trying to I'm just gonna say the word bodybuilding, I know it's not correct, but just aesthetically build bigger legs. You're basically doing what? Four to five sets, 12 of 12 reps of squats, then seated leg curls, uh, then reverse seated leg, so hamstring curls, um, what, deadlifts. Uh, yeah, just basically four to, f four to five sets of all of those. And just basically just tire the heck out of your legs. You work through the exhaustion, uh, yeah, and that where that's where the main difference kicks in when you're trying to train to increase your vertical leap. You're not you're not gonna increase your fast twitch muscle fibers if you're constantly training through exhaust, exhaustion. Because if you didn't know uh, how fast twitch to, uh, muscle fibers are actually trained or activated the most is when you're actually doing endurance work. So think cross country running, just running laps something like that you activate slow twitch muscle fibers which basically in case you didn't know when you're doing any basically any sort of like long dense just anything that takes endurance uh where you have to constantly i don't know it, it, you, there's no rest it's it goes for exercise for a long period of time so reverse of hit, hit or whatever you call it um so think running blah blah, blah. even jump roping if you do it for over 10 minutes uh not sprinting is that see that's the difference uh, so anything that's endurance related and you have to uh, withstand it for over I don't know five minutes I would say is a good estimate that becomes endurance that works your uh, slow twitch muscle fibers and also when it, let's say okay let's say you're doing a uh, three sets four sets of 15 reps on a, on squats or something like that you're not going that heavy because you're not gonna be doing heavy well you're not Larry Wheels but some people most people can't lift a uh, 15 reps uh, heavyweight for four sets so 
rep eight or nine, you're already gonna start fatiguing and you're gonna be pushing through that fatigue. Um, and basically that's the opposite of what you're trying to do because in this I learned from PJF performance, basically when you work through exhausted muscles, as I said, you activate slow, mu uh, slow twitch muscle fibers in. And even if you're in a hurry, it's better just to wait four to five minutes between each leg exercise. I know it can make leg, ex leg workouts super long, but the more you activate your slow twitch muscle fibers, the less the opposite. So the fast twitch muscles are going to be activated. So what an actual workout looks like is anywhere from four to six exercises. Uh, my specific exercises are Bulgarian split squats, called jump squat with weights, pistol squats, but those are debatable because if you have bad knees or knee problems in general, you should avoid those because it's too much pressure on your knee. Um, I do use leg presses from time to time. Uh, I usually sometimes, well, I'm not gonna lie. I have been using the leg press a lot more because here in my apartment, that's the only thing I have that I can max out weight with. Uh, there's no barbells or anything like that. So I've been using the seated barbell, seated leg press. But now the difference is what I do is I max out the machine so it's about 230 pounds and then I come down with one leg. So I, when after I fully extend my legs, I take one off and I try to hold that weight as long as possible and then explode back with two legs. Uh, and the whole, the whole point is to work as, with as much heavy weight as you can for as little reps as you can. So four to eight reps I would say. That's kind of what I do. Uh, I usually stick to eight. Uh, for everything, I mostly do eight, uh, six sometimes, and then I have my heavy, heavy days where I just do four to five, four to six different, four to six reps total for each exercise. Um, and basically, what you're trying to do is just you're gonna focus on the lowering part of the exercise because that's when you're actually building the muscle. That's when all the tension is building up, and then by lifting the weight up fast, that's when your fast twitch muscle fibers are activated. For short periods of time that's why you stay within those six day reps don't try to go past those for there's there is a lot of exercises you can go above those but for your standard exercises i would never go above eight now personally with me my results have been right now i have about a 34 inch vertical still pretty low but i'm on my way to increasing it hopefully hopefully i haven't maxed out now plyometrics is where everybody gets confused so there's a lot of trainers saying that basketball by itself is good enough of a plyometric for almost everybody in the world because just the act of playing basketball is a plyometric, getting, jumping up to get the rebound, you know what I'm saying? So just layups in general, you're jumping, uh, jump shots even, you in, know, in, in a way. But it's just, it's just not true because it's two different things. It's, you're not getting the same positions you're getting in the game when you're trying to do certain ply plyometric exercises. Now, you do want to be careful if you have knee problems, uh, tendinopathy, whatever, because it will just aggravate it if you go too fast. Now, it doesn't mean you won't ever be able to do plyometrics, it just means you have to take it slowly, maybe start with just one set when it, whenever you're training a week, and blah, 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 race that up. So yeah, uh, let, let, let's just assume that you've already been at least exercising for six months, because at this point, I think a lot of people have. Um, you could start considering adding in exercises every leg day you have during the week. Um, so what your plyos could consist of is basically anywhere from three to four sets of six reps uh, each exercise. Uh, it's exercises just as your box jumps, your step ups. Uh, depth jump is the best uh, plyometric exercise that there is. It's the number one. Thing that can help you transfer your momentum into the actual air so yeah focus on that one the most uh, and from there uh, what's it called skipping is also really good and yeah that's pretty much every, everything guys uh, stay tuned for my next uh, part two for bulking video and yeah